Hey everyone, so today we're fishing at the Elk River System, which is about uh, 10 to 12 hour drive from Vancouver. Um, this is just outside of the town Fernie, and uh, if you're really into drive by fishing, this is definitely a place you need to visit at least once. This is our third time here, and uh, in, the, in our past trip, we have always done pretty well. Uh, if you notice, today we got our life jacket on because we're actually doing a drift down the river um, with using our um, Alcars power drifters. It's actually my first time drifting, so a little anxious, but uh, we've got two very experienced drifters with me, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing will go wrong. For now, we're fishing a run here, and uh, let's try to catch some West Oak Cuttle Trout. That's a fish. Oh, came off. First fish of the day. Came off the line, that's not a good sign. It's not sharp enough. That's why I blame them. They're all hiding right in front of that big rock. Yeah. Another one? I don't want you to stay on. Not a very big one. Uh, what is that? Oh, it's a cutty. Oh, not bad. Look pretty small to put it out, but it's actually not a bad fish. First fish of the day, not a bad size, beautiful looking fish. These are Westlope cutthroat trout that we're catching today. Nice release. Oh, that water's cold. So, half an hour into the fishing, we got two lost, one miss, and one landed. Not a bad start. Where that uh, rock is boiling right there. Yeah. I would go through about three feet to the right of that. Okay, that so right, right line. through this middle. I'll, I'll go right yeah. through here. And you just, yeah. I wouldn't be afraid of those big waves. No, but this one. But that one you'd be afraid of. Yeah. And where the two currents are coming together. Yeah. You see it sort of going like this. Yeah. Two currents. And probably be okay, but that's kind of spot where. Sometimes it goes oh, like this. Go to the middle here and then go down even further, right over just to the other side of that yeah. rock. Just to this side of that rock. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah, I wouldn't be afraid of the big waves. The big waves, no. See how the current sort of pulls over yeah. itself? Your boat might do the same thing. <laughs> That. We're, even if you get flipping, it's not the end of the world. No. You just get wet. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. I didn't get life insurance. Okay, time to go down to the first set of rapids. And uh, this guy promised us he's going to be really gentle. Doesn't look very gentle to me. So we'll see how that goes.
Well, that was kind of interesting. I focused so much on the rapids, which actually wasn't too bad. Went through it quite nicely. But uh, for some reason, I just kept going. I forgot how to paddle. And they, the other guys had to chase me down. But uh, two runs later, and now we're on the bank again, ready to do some fishing. So apparently it's pretty shallow down there, there's a log running across the rapids so we uh, have to walk our boat down there according to our guide. So let's get going. Almost had it. Ah, oh, missed again. Yeah, I think so. So further upstream, we, we bumped into a whole bunch of fish at the tail out where they were coming up for the hatch and uh, I chucked my dry fly out. Had three different chances, fish actually came up and grabbed it, but I think I was too fast on the strike and missed them all. Oh well, that's okay. It's been a pretty good trip, been a very good lesson. First time drifting the boat and uh, learned a few things, then I really can't need to improve my rowing skill before I do it again. And uh, drifting is actually pretty good if you like to explore a new river. Um, if you want to cover lots of water. And it's pretty exciting too just being out on the water all the time. And with a beautiful setting like this, you know, by the Rocky Mountain, you can't really beat that. Oh, this one, finally. <laughs> we made about 20, 30 cars in here and just about ready to give up and start chatting away and make one more cast. What do you know? One fish came up and grabbed the dry in the shallow. So yesterday, we uh, did the drift on the elk and had quite a few fish came up full of dry but 
missed every single one of them. So I thought, well, today's our last day. We did some work at the hatchery and had a few hours to, to spare right now in the evening. So I decided to come out again to see if we can get another fish on the dry. And here it is. That's a nice west slope cutthroat. Beautiful looking fish. It's amazing how a small creek like this can produce fish this size. So let's let it go. Thank you. Ah, mosquitoes are killing me here. But that was a really pretty fish. First fish of the evening. We've been uh, earlier with fish further downstream and had a few fish came up and missed them all as usual. Not too sure why I'm missing all the dry fly hits this year. But uh, that's a good start. Oh, missed it. Whoa, that fish was right against the high bank on the far side. Yeah, I don't think that fish is going to come up again. Oh, he came up again. Just when I said it. This one. That was cast number three and that didn't take very long. Another fat fish. Look at it. Beautiful. Look at the spots and the coloration of the west slope. Just really pretty to look at. Oh, one just came up on the far side. Let's see if we can get over there. Yep, oh, damn it. Missed it. Try again. Might come up again. Nope, not that time. I knew it was gonna come up. Oh, that one came up really close to the shoreline. The water's only like, oh, and it just came up again. The water's only about, I don't know, a foot deep. And I'm very scared, it's right in front of me. Oh, there it is. Gotcha. <laughs> Whew. That, was, that was pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting when, you know, you see the fish come up once grab something else and then you drift the dry fly through it and then you come up again comes up again and grab you grabs your uh, fly that's pretty amazing oh it's not ready yet oh watch it Okay, big fish again. This one's a little more colored than the other ones. So I'm gonna sleep up. Oh, making a mess here. Hey, 
There it is. Another nice fish. They're all about the same size, aren't they? And they're all really big. See you later. Well, it looks like this run has quite a few hungry fish. The last one, we, we had the old one coming up and they seemed pretty moody though. Didn't really go and grab it. And... But this one we got here, I must have had about five or six takes. And besides that, we've seen quite a few other rises as well. So we'll keep going at it and see if we can get another one out of this pool before, before the sun goes down. So like I said earlier, there's actually a you know, it's, it's a pretty heavy mayfly hatch going on and uh, occasionally you can see them dipping down in the water, dropping the eggs and uh, so I've, I've decided to put on the mayfly pattern. This is actually a fly that was given to me by um, a good friend of mine, Ola, in, um, from Denmark and he, he personally he tied up a couple of them and gave it to me while we were fishing there in a little tiny stream and uh, I never caught any fish while I was over there but uh, he, he has really paid off today, so thank, thanks very much for that. So I think that's it for today because um, these fish have stopped rising um, in the last 15 minutes or so. It seems like someone has turned off the switch. So I think we're going to head back before the bears start coming out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video especially the drift yesterday and the dry fly fishing today. And for more fishing information in British Columbia, such as the Kootenai area, please check out our website at www.fishingwithrod.com and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like our videos. And le please leave a comment or you know, if you have any questions or feedback, we'll always be happy to answer them. So until next time, good luck fishing.